All right. On this episode of the Supplement Lab, we're gonna talk about our fun little pre-workout here. Specimen, why it hits so hard and what it's really doing for you on this episode of the Supplement Lab. Now, this is kind of interesting because this is the first time that I've uh, done a video where it's already been reviewed by a couple of different reviewers out there. So those of you who have actually tried this, here's a little inside peek as far as what's going on. And we really mean that you should, you know, kind of start out with a half scoop. So, you know, the feedback's been pretty interesting. A lot of these people that have tried it have been kind of intimidated, but we'll, you know, unveil what that's all about. So this is, you know, a basic pre-workout and it's kind of a boring category, but the dosages that we have in here are pretty legit across the board. Um, like I said earlier, we're not kidding when we say a half scoop because a full scoop is going to actually contain 400 milligrams of caffeine. And you don't want to take 400 milligrams of caffeine to the face without thinking twice. Um, but in addition to that, we've got a combination of two different yo himbines, which I like to call the yo-yo blend. Um, and we'll talk about that as well. So we'll get right into it. As far as uh, the different categories, there's four basic categories here. Let's start with hydration aspects. I'm gonna start talking about betaine, betaine anhydrous, which this is also referred to as trimethylglycine. Now, it's actually one of the original precursors to the formation of creatine along with the amino acid methionine and L-arginine. And what else betaine does is it's a methyl group donor. So it's able to take the methyl groups inside the actual molecular structure and sling those to different things that also need methyl groups inside of your body. In addition to that, it's also an osmolytic, so it's something that's uh, considered to be something that can help the body cope with osmolytic stress and maintaining cell volume integrity, which is also kind of nice. Taurine happens to also fall into this category of osmolytic agents that help keep water within the cell, but it's essential to the retina, it's essential to the central nervous system, and it's essential to muscle growth. In fact, so much to the point where mice in an experimental setting where they had the ability to have uh, taurine in their bodies knocked out had an 80% decrease in actual muscular function and exercise capacity. Um, the third thing we're going to talk about is glycerol as glycer pump. Now, glycerol is also an osmolite, so it helps increase like the body's ability to keep water within the cell. Some studies have actually investigated glycerol as a hyperhydrating agent in extreme heat and hot temperatures. But also on that same kind of token, it increases blood plasma viscosity and in this kind of effect, it's also a cryoprotectant, meaning that it can help protect against freezing. Um, this is something that is employed by like different nematodes and actual toads and hibernating animals to decrease the, the harsh impacts of ice crystals that could potentially form in their bloodstream while they hibernate. But in addition to that, glycerol is really good for pumps. Also on this hydration aspect thing, we've got sodium, potassium, and magnesium gluconates that are all in there to help maintain hydration. So after that, there's an honorable mention for beta alanine. It doesn't really fall into the hydration aspect, but the cool thing about beta alanine is it's also a phosphagen in the sense that it's a precursor to the dipeptide carnosine. So when beta alanine and histidine come together, they form carnosine and much like creatine, it's able to shuttle more phosphate groups around in the cell and create more ATP. Uh, also beta alanine is something that buffers against lactic acid. So, you know, if you tend to get sore and you want better endurance, beta alanine is a good way to go. Next up on this list is gonna be the B vitamins here. Now, the B vitamins are actually a little bit more essential to the functioning of this product than you may think. Now, it's important to differentiate between coenzyme B vitamins and then the cheaper regular B vitamins. Coenzyme B vitamins are B vitamins that are actually already in their bioavailable and functioning form that's endogenous to what's found in the body. Now, we have two different coenzyme B vitamins in this blend. One of them is pyridoxal 5 prime phosphate, which is essential to the formation of various neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine. We'll get into that in just a second. But also methylcobalamin, which is the bioactive form of vitamin B12. Now, if you see cyanocobalamin or pyridoxine hydrochloride, these are lesser forms of vitamin B6 and B12, but we have the nice ones that are in here. However, we do have riboflavin. It's not the coenzyme form. There is a form called riboflavin 5-phosphate, but on that one, we kind of skipped. And the other thing is that we've got niacin in here as well. And if you take in this pre-workout, you do get the flush a little bit, 
but you should be thankful because I actually wanted to put more niacin in here. But the whole point between having niacin and riboflavin in here is that they're precursors to other things. Niacin is a precursor to NAD, nicotinamide, something that's actually really good for your chromosomal integrity. It activates sirtuins and works with histone deacetylase to make sure that your genes are protected and they're kept healthy for a long time. So riboflavin is actually a lesser known, you know, kind of precursor as well because it's something that is a precursor to flavin adenine dinucleotide, which is another different kind of quasi B vitamin that it actually catalyzes and facilitates a lot of reactions in the body. I would say that FAD and NAD are both like cousins and they both work in similar kinds of capacities. So they're also crucial to all kinds of cellular functioning. So this is why B vitamins are also good. The other two cool things that I kind of mentioned earlier is that P5P and methylcobalamin, they're also methyltransferase quasi coenzyme activity. So they're able to move around methyl groups, especially the ones that are donated, say, from things like betaine or possibly choline. And they help move these things around to help decrease endogenous homocysteine levels, which is a biomarker for cardiovascular disease. Next is the energy side. I talked about caffeine at length in Adrenal. Uh, just to note, in specimen, it does have 400 milligrams, which is a whopping dose of caffeine. Now, caffeine is an adenosine receptor antagonist, which increases wakefulness, but it's also something that causes a subsequent release of dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine, which I'll talk about a little bit more too. After that, we have some L-theanine in here, only in 100 milligrams, but it's really just to take that edge off the caffeine. We've got cholinase in here. I'll talk about that. It's a two to one to one ratio of choline by tartrate to alpha GPC to actual CDP choline. The really interesting thing about our choline by tartrate is it's entirely a levorotatory isomer. Now, just to touch on isomers really quick, because I will do this again later, is isomers are molecules that are almost identical, but they have a certain handedness. One's a right-handed form and a left-handed form. And usually it's these left-handed forms that actually have biological activity, whereas the right-handed form would have to be converted. There's a few enzymes that do this with a few special exceptions inside the body, but for the most part, they're not really usable by our tissues. So to have a purified L form of choline is ensuring that it's entirely biologically active. Now, if you do the rundown on cholinase, we've got regular choline by tartrate in the levorotatory form. We've got alpha GBC and we've got CDP choline. And if you consider the actual choline percentage on these things, you're looking at about 41% of actual choline in choline by tartrate. 40% of actual choline and alpha GPC. And then CDP choline also has 21% of actual choline. So, you know, even though these things will have completely different mechanisms on their own, outside of being a choline donor, I just felt like it would be important to let you know how much actual choline is there in each of these compounds. Now, last thing on this list is L-tyrosine. Now, L-tyrosine works with P5P because P5P as a coenzyme is a cofactor in an enzyme called aromatic amino acid decarboxylase, which means it pulls the carboxyl group off of that so it can actually become a precursor to dopamine and norepinephrine. And this ties in to the next thing with the heavier stimulants. Now, norepinephrine is the endogenous beta-2 adrenergic receptor agonist. Now, a lot of beta-2 adrenergic receptor agonists are used in fat burning kind of products. However, what they do is they activate something on the surface of fat cells called the hormone sensitive lipase and it liberates triglycerides from inside the actual adipocyte. But this is also part of the body's natural endogenous fight or flight response. You know, you run into a bear in the woods, you're either gonna do one of two things. You're gonna run for your life or you're gonna fight that bear and you're gonna kill it somehow. And this is all mediated by the adrenaline rush. If you flood your body with adrenaline, all of a sudden the body just completely reroutes all the blood to the extremities because you're gonna fight or you're gonna flight. And you know, facilitating digestion is not as much of a high priority in such a life-threatening situation. So by activating the beta-2 adrenergic receptors, we're able to cause more of this chemically induced fight or flight response, but at the same time, we're liberating fat from the storage sites. This ties into halostashine. Now, halostashine here is another beta-2 adrenergic agonist, though it is a partial agonist. It has a fairly short half-life of approximately one hour, but you're only gonna be working out for maybe two hours or so in the gym. So what you're gonna feel with the halostashine is this abrupt you know, increase here 
and actual fight or flight response kind of tendencies, increased heart rate, increased respiration, increased salivation, blood flow to the extremities, and so on and so forth. But this is gonna be reinforced by the yo-yo combo, yohimbine hydrochloride and rewalsine. These are also both right and left-handed isomers. On a molecular level, they're 100% the same if you account for every bit of nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen that's actually there, but they're different handedness. The thing is the body can actually recognize these things. Most of you guys who've taken pre-workouts and stuff before definitely recognize yohimbine hydrochloride, but yohimbine hydrochloride can give a little anxiety. You know, it's it's something that will activate what are called the alpha-1 adrenergic receptors, which is something that, you know, endogenous adrenaline is usually going to activate. But it also is an antagonist of some of the serotonin receptors as well. And this is where you end up getting the weird fluctuations in sweating. Now, what's different about yohimbine hydrochloride and actual rewalsine here is rewalsine, at least from my anecdotal perspective, and as far as my years of experience with rewalsine, is that it doesn't have as much of a psychological effect, but it may maintains the physiological effect. You're less likely to, you know, have some sort of weird chemically induced anxiety attack, but at the same time, that blood flow to the extremities, the increased heart rate, and all the kind of stuff that might help you drive more in the gym is actually gonna be facilitated by rewalsine. And we kind of chose to do a moderate dose on both of these things to try to get the best of both worlds without being too overstimulatory with regular EO and bind hydrochloride, but not really shorting you with the actual rewalsine. So this is a moderate combo. You're gonna have like this sharp, sharp increase in energy. There's gonna be some perspiration. There's gonna be flushing to the skin. You're gonna feel like you're on fire, but it's a good thing because within about one hour, it's gonna start fading out and you'll just end up with the physiological kind of effects that you're actually looking for for your performance gains. In addition to this, this alien pop here is actually something that I'm gonna throw into this little beaker And within a short time, as this baby mixes, the riboflavin will get into the water because it is a water-soluble B vitamin. And it's really cool because riboflavin just so happens to fluoresce under UV light. If you saw the cheat video and saw that the berberine fluoresced under UV, you'll also realize that the riboflavin here in specimen kind of does the same thing. Yes, it will make your pee turn this color because it is a water-soluble B vitamin, but it's just another kind of cool little interesting nuance that we have in this product. So, in closing, it's, it's pretty strong, I'm not gonna lie. Start with a half scoop, assess your tolerance before you jump up and graduate to the full scoop kind of category. Um, and also, you know, take it all with a grain of salt. You know, most of this stuff is gonna run through your system pretty quickly and you'll be set to cruising altitude throughout the rest of your workouts. This has been Specimen. Take it wisely. See you next time on the Supplement Lab.